Broken brackets here, get your broken brackets here. This episode finished off the round of 32. That means we all know the top 16. If you don't know the top 16 yet, you better go watch it before there's major spoilers ahead. You're probably wrong. This week we're going to talk to Endgame and Perfect Phoenix. Both fought each other. If you watched the episode, you didn't know that. And we're going to have a little discussion amongst ourselves about who's, what our favorite fights of the night were. And we're also going to do our uh, giveaway, release the results of our giveaway. I'm Will Bales from Hypershock. We're Mike and Andrea Galately from Team Witch Doctor. And this is a Tale of the Tape after show. Welcome to the Tale of the Tape after show. Let's get started with our 30 second recap. 30 seconds on the clock! This week we saw Bloodsport breaking his bar on the first hit, but goes the full distance. Tantrum parades Fusion around like a fancy top hat. Sawblaze excising Kraken's upper jaw. And Mammoth slapping Copperhead around for a full three minutes. Lockjaw goes out in a blaze of glory and a shattered head. Endgame teaches Phoenix to fly. Jackpot takes his self-rider off and regrets it instantly. And Farouk takes forever to announce the winner of Witch Doctor vs. Scorpios. For our first deep dive, we're going to talk to Tyler Wynn from Perfect Phoenix after his match against Endgame. It's cool to see a young builder who has a lot of driving experience uh, with a robot that has, theoretically, very good pedigree. And I love at the end of this match, after Endgame is like abusing Perfect Phoenix, you know, Tyler is not sad, he's not upset, he is like super pumped. He's like, whoa! <laughs> I mean, that just shows that he's such a great competitor and I hope to see him next year. And Tyler's only 11, but honestly, I think he's already uh, competing for one of the best drivers in the sport. Uh, his drive, especially the last two matches, has been really impressive. Uh, so here's Tyler to talk technical and tell us all about his robot. Hi, this is Tyler from Team Perfect Phoenix, and today I'm going to be talking to you about my robot. Uh, the history of my robot is that it was built by Paul Ventimiglia, three-time Modern BattleBots champion. And um, he's actually won a first giant nut with Perfect Phoenix, which was um, renamed from Brutality. And he won the 2009 Untelevised BattleBots Parade Championship. Uh, the changes I made to it this season, other than fixing it up in general repairs, uh, we reinforced the um, we reinforced the frame with steel so that it would stand up to modern impacts better. Because back in 2009, you didn't really need um, all that much steel to take impacts, but in 2020, you do. Um, the weapon and drive system were mostly unchanged, and the robot was is still um, quite a ways underweight, which is what we're trying to um, fix for next season. Uh, Perfect Phoenix is an overhead bar spinner run by two short mag motors, and the weapon is powered by two D-Pack automotive motors. It also has a pretty long battery life. Um, it uses about half the battery that Tombstone would spinning up because the weapon's a bit uh, less powerful and smaller. In the pits, we had to um, change out broken speed controllers and motors. We also had to fix cracked frames. Um, so Scorpios' saw, um, it hit one of the um, the critical frame supports and cracked our gearbox, and it was really tough to repair that. Also, um, Endgame made pretty much irreparable damage to the bottom of the robot with one of its last hits, so we'll probably need to get a new frame for next season. Um, for my first season of BattleBots, I learned the uh, physics of driving a heavyweight. Um, so the inertia of driving a heavyweight is a lot harder uh, than the inertia of driving an insect weight because it's um, higher mass. So the acceleration and deceleration is slower and you have to get used to that. Um, however, you can actually use a technique called uh, drifting. Um, so the, if you can use your large mass to drift around the battle box, especially with like a wheels that aren't the most grippy, like Colson wheels, and they can be used to um, be less predictable. For next season, my plans are to make a reinforced, bigger, thicker frame. Um, I'm gonna change my uh, weapon motors out from D-Packs to mag motors. Um, the wedge will be changed from a mild steel to AR-500. AR and um, the drive motors will be replaced with more powerful motors. My biggest challenge as the uh, youngest competitor was that um, it wasn't actually that prevalent in BattleBots. However, in most events, I'm underestimated. Like there was that um, one time 
in like uh, I think it was an ant weight event. I actually won that event. However, um, some some guy walked up to me, uh, looked at my robot, and it was like a really mean vertical spinner, and it it was quite powerful. But he walked up to my robot, and he said, um, and he said verbatim, "Oh, that robot looks okay. It might win someday." Uh, what basically happened is I won the entire event after that, and I haven't heard from the builder since, since his robot got wrecked by a horizontal spinner. Um, however, at BattleBots, that issue was actually not very prevalent, because all the builders were, um, very nice and polite. And, uh, the robot is actually, um, 40, I want to say 44 pounds underweight. We could actually bring along my featherweight drum spinner. Um, to the event, and it would st as a mini bot, and it would still be underweight. But with for next year, with the um bigger robot and reinforced um frame and a wedge, we'll probably actually be fighting against the weight limit rather than trying to build up to it. So now that we talked to Tyler, let's talk to Nick Maybe and Endgame. Yeah, my favorite part about this match was that Endgame actually pushes Perfect Phoenix all the way to the wall and launches Perfect Phoenix at the judges. Chris and Kenny's reactions were priceless. Some great driving by both robots in this fight. I wonder how bad the uh, dry cleaning fee was on their suits. Even going into this round, in Endgame's post-fight interview, you hear them talking about still tuning their parameters on their weapon spin-up and stuff like that. So, I mean, they're still dialing their robot in. Um, and obviously I think they got their robot working really well this fight. So, you know, we'll have to wait and see how, how far into the bracket they get. Hey, uh, my name's Nick Mavey. I'm the captain of Endgame this year. Um, but we made some other changes as well, uh, most notably to the robot, uh, which is an entirely new design this year built from the ground up. Um, I think the most obvious change that people will be noticing is that the robot's actually working as intended this, this year round. Um, we're all very happy with with how it's been performing so far. Um, but on a more technical level, uh, obviously we're, we've ditched the, the sunglasses, which we're, we're all very sad about. Uh, we, we thought long and hard about uh, how to keep them, uh, but they're just too unreliable, uh, too vulnerable where, where we had them. Um, so unfortunately, no more sunglasses. New South Rider, it's internal to the robot. Um, it's much safer in there. It's much more reliable. Um, we have doubled the number of weapon belts, so from two to four. Uh, hopefully at least one of them now will, will stay on during all of our fights. Uh, and we have improved our front armor. Um, we've worked a lot be between last season and this season on our, our, our vertical front armor, but we've pretty much been fighting nothing but horizontals. We've had a, a, a short fight uh, against Hypershock uh, where we got to show that off, but Hopefully, uh, we'll be able to to show off our, our, our vertical uh, configuration a bit more in the future. Um, but by far, the, the biggest changes were all made internally. So we, we ditched our old speed controllers, um, got entirely new ones. Uh, even those ones, the new ones, we've, we've, we've modified from their stock versions, hopefully to, to make them better. Um, new motors... Um, basically the same ones as last year just just completely refurbished so so new shafts new bearings new new mounting um everything is shock mounted now so so everything's now up on uh, either rubber or foam um but previously we had our motors and some switches and stuff that were that were mounted directly to the frame and that gave us a couple issues but really uh, the biggest change that we've we've made internally is we've gone full duck and uh all of our speed controllers are completely isolated from each other. So each speed controller has its own battery and its own set of receivers with no signal wires traveling between them. Um, we, we've in the past, uh, you know, cut signal wires by closing the lid of our robot. Uh, and that's cost us. So, so no more. That will never happen again. Um, but one of the biggest differences really was, um, just we got to do so much more testing, uh, this year round. Um, in previous seasons, we, basically um, only got to, to take the robot out for a weekend or two beforehand. Uh, like we, last season we, we, we brought it out um, for one weekend fully together, um, drove it around, went to a, uh, an abandoned building site and uh, managed, managed to drive around for a bit, hit our test load, it, it broke immediately. Um, 
the robot, not the test load. Um, and by that point, it was like midnight already, and then security came and picked us, uh, kicked us out. Uh, so that was basically it. And next weekend, we had to shove it in a crate and ship it off to BattleBots. Um, this year round, though, well, we had like months where we got to you know take it out weekend after weekend, drive it around, um, drive it into curbs, hit the test load. We were able to work out a lot of the kinks uh, before the season started this year. Uh, this season, the weapon's been uh, like a lot more reliable. Uh, in previous season, it's been difficult to keep it going. It can take a lot of, of coaxing to get it up to full speed. Um, we've always been able to deliver really big hits, but in previous seasons, they've been few and far between. Uh, but this time around, we can really count on it to be up at speed whenever we whenever the opportunity presents itself. So I, I think the geometry of our weapon combined with the, our front end is really what allows us to deliver these, these really big hits. Uh, our front end does a really good job of positioning the robot um, to impart like a lot of our weapons energy into the robot. And, and now with the extra reliability uh, that Endgame has, the weapon spins straight back up again. Um, and then it's ready to do it like within a couple seconds. And, and so we've been getting a lot more hits this season than in previous seasons where we can actually show off the weapon. We actually didn't have to change the robot too much uh, while at, while we're at BattleBot so far. Um, in previous seasons, like there was always something, you know, like this thing was broken or like, like this mounting doesn't work or like this thing just needs to be like fully replaced because it's just not acting as like we wanted it to. Uh, but this season, there's, there's been very little of that. Um, we've had to change our wheels, uh, during the Bloodsport fight. Obviously, uh, we ejected a wheel. Um, and so we were running new wheels this year, um, and we've we've ditched those and we've gone back to our old wheels, and they're they're performing reliably, um, like we've always known that they do. Um, and then we've had to make some minor um, adjustments to the speed controllers, like in the settings, just to hopefully avoid avoid the fires. Um, and that's really it. The only change we've had to make, uh, which is like so much less than previous seasons. Uh, the the biggest changes we really make are to like tailor our robot to to fight the next opponent. Uh, for instance, like Rotator, um, it's a really difficult bot to fight. Um, it's a really tough robot, both both in terms of strategy and just the robot itself. Like like Rotator is nigh on unkillable; it just keeps going and going and going. Um, but in terms of the strategy, like like you've got the rock paper scissors of of uh, wedge, wedgelet, uh, horizontal vertical, uh, whereas he sort of breaks that mold where he's got both a horizontal and wedgelets at the same time. Um, so yeah, the horizontal like forces us to use our wedges because because if we were put wedgelets on, they'd just be pinged off immediately. Um, but we can't treat uh, the rotator fight like like we did with Tombstone. Um, we've got to be very careful of the wedgelets because no, we know he's going to be coming at us with them. Because uh, he's not going to want to come at us if we've got wedges with the with the horizontal. Uh, so we just had to take extra care to to like sharpen, level the wedges to get them, you know, perfectly flat. Uh, give him as little chance as possible of getting under them. Um, and then we just got to Jack has really got to drive well. Uh, got to notice when if he's getting under us to twist and turn away. Uh, it's it's quite a challenge. Victor is Victor has made an amazing robot, and uh, and Rotate is a really difficult beast to fight. One of the most fun matches to watch this episode was seeing Mammoth, the biggest robot in the event, uh, going up against Copperhead, who's tiny. Probably the smallest robot in the event. Certainly one of them. Uh, it's it's interesting size dynamic, you know, trying to figure out how Mammoth can even land a solid hit and get the right leverage that they need. And at the same time, Copperhead was having the, these same issues that we've seen other robots have where there's not enough meat on Mammoth to really get a good bite and, and transfer enough energy. Yeah, and unfortunately Copperhead was, seemed to have some weapon issues in the middle of, throughout the middle of this fight. So, I mean, you know, maybe it would have gone a different way. It, like, it's really hard to show damage against Mammoth because it's so big and like dangly. Um, and also, it's really hard for Mammoth to show damage uh, to Copperhead because, you know, what are they, they're just flipping them around. So, you know, if Copperhead's weapon keeps going out, the judges might have weighed that as damage to Copperhead. Well, and speaking of damage, uh, Will, when you fought Mammoth, I think uh, you actually destroyed that uh, weapon attachment that they had. 
because Ricky comments that he has uh, no choice but to use the floppier uh, UHMW weapon that he had used against Huge, mm -hmm. which is not typically what he would use for this kind of fight. But honestly, I think that made it harder for Copperhead to land damage since it's just a flexible thing that moves around. So I think it actually worked to Mammoth's advantage here. Absolutely. When you look at the two robots, you make a very good point. It's kind of the epitome of compliance and floppy stuff uh, versus robust, rigid um, uh, in Copperhead. And it was an interesting outcome. You guys fought too. You want to talk about it? <laughs> you, you did well. The, we the weapons didn't break. That's good. Weapons didn't break. Woo! <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a tough fight and we were super nervous uh, going into it. Uh, Zach and Diana are both like excellent, excellent drivers of Scorpios. And Scorpios is like the wedgiest wedge, you know, has those real long, low uh, forks in the front. So we knew that it was going to be a tough driving match for sure. Luckily, we were able to disable their weapon kind of early in the match, so uh, they were only able to really just push us around, which they did quite well. Well, I think you really surprised them here with your strategy because usually when a robot has a big wedge, you try to avoid it. And, and you did to an extent to try to get some different hits, but when you realize you couldn't avoid it, you just monster trucked right up and try to get damage on parts that are normally really high up or robots don't get up on. So I think surprising them with that strategy was really to our advantage this match. And it worked out. You did a great job. You took out the disc. Uh, there was a whole bunch of little you know, damage here and there that you can see on their Facebook page uh, and I think on their Instagram too. So the, the drive over, over landing tactic, um, not on all robots, but at least on, on Scorpios can work. And obviously we're starting the tournament as a number 23 seed. So we knew that our first match was going to be a tough one and it absolutely was. But it was also a chance for us to show that Witch Doctor is working really well. The weapon's at 100%. The drive is great. Uh, Mike's driving was excellent in this one against such a tough competitor. So hopefully it just shows good things to come from us in the tournament. But you'll have to stay tuned to find out. God, I was hoping for a spoiler. <laughs> the next fight I really want to talk about is uh, Rotator and Jackpot. This is a fight that I was super impressed at the beginning with Jackpot. They were landing some big, big hits on Rotator. And then it, you know, it kind of seemed to turn around in the middle of the fight. Yeah, I, I think Jackpot for a first year robot with a small budget and a tight time frame did amazingly well. Uh, but I think they realized going into this fight that they had one major flaw and that was no defensive strategy. They had to get that wedge you know, bolted on last minute uh, and try to you know, clue something together to make it work. And it didn't. Um, yeah, they, they you know, sort of were doing okay for a little bit against, uh, against Rotator, but Rotator has this amount of durability that seemingly no other robot does. Um, so even after bashing him around for you know, a couple hits, he whips right around and, and lands this hit that flips him over and they're done. And I thought it was interesting to see Jackpot actually put their wedge on the back of the robot. Uh, that's a strategy that Rotator also uses. He has defense on one side, offense on the other. Um, and usually vertical spinners, you know, like, like you or like us, we'll put our wedge on the front. So we're leading um, that vertical spinner, uh, that horizontal spinner on rotator right into our weapon. Uh, Jackpot had to choose whether to be defensive or offensive. They couldn't really do both at once. Uh, and rotator couldn't either. So it makes for some really interesting driving. Yeah, and they took a weight penalty, uh, obviously adding this, this uh, you know, wedge on the back. So they had to take their self-writing mechanism off and replace it for the wedge, which seemed to work at the beginning, but obviously at the end, and I'm sure they thought, oh, we're going up against a horizontal spinner, there's no way we'll get flipped over. But uh, gyroscopic force is some weird stuff, and Rotator gets a perfect hit on, and they flip over right up against the wall, and they are done. On this week's Chris Roast of the Night, Kenny Florian lands a, a pretty solid one on Mr. Awkward. You're like Chris Rose, you're awkward, but you're effective. Uh, you I feel like this is revenge for the potato head jokes. Oh yeah, yeah, it's pretty <laughs> solid. It was pretty good. And, and the look, like the... Not all the punches Kenny throws are physical. And they hurt just <laughs> as bad. Hi Ricky, it's Captain Awkward here with a question. <laughs> with this week's fan question, here's Behind the Bots with a question from our YouTube comments section. Hey Tail of the Tape, this is Behind the Bots with the fan question of the week. House Magna Ingram from YouTube wants to know, why is it that most vertical disc spinners have one weapon tooth, while most horizontal spinners have two? That reminds me, I have to go to the dentist tomorrow. What time? 2.30. That's a great question. We actually get this question a lot. So we're going to throw this one to our buddy Technical T-Rex. Well, 
Hold on, because last week I promised Will that he could answer this one. He was really upset. Uh, so, so Will, go ahead. It's only fair. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. Like, go for it. We not promise. like all the other times where I said, okay, okay and I started, and then you cut me off. We're, we're really sorry, Will. You could totally answer this one. You've, you've had asymmetric weapons, symmetric weapons. You're very qualified actually, to actually answer this question. Actually, I, I, I haven't had asymmetrical weapons. Um, yeah. can, I, can I defer to the T-Rex? Are you sure, buddy? I, I haven't had asymmetrical weapons. You do. I, I don't. Right, well, if you insist, let's throw it to the technical T-Rex. Technical T-Rex, technical T-Rex, the T in T-Rex stands for technical. We've seen robots with spinning weapons with many different numbers of teeth. Some choose their tooth count based purely on aesthetics, but most teams take their tooth bite into consideration, trying to maximize for the biggest hits. All robots are limited to a 250 mile per hour tip speed limit. A smaller weapon and a larger weapon will be spinning at different RPM, or revolutions per minute, to reach that speed. The smaller weapon will spin at higher RPM to maintain the maximum tip speed, so the tooth will come around more frequently. The more often the tooth comes around, the less bite it has at a given drive speed. Bite, or how much a weapon tooth engages your opponent, is a result of the weapon's RPM, how many teeth it has, and how quickly the robots are moving at each other. Bite is how far your robot can advance before the next tooth comes back around for a hit. The bigger the bite, the more damage a weapon can dish out. Horizontal weapons tend to be larger in diameter and spin at a lower RPM, so they don't need to worry about achieving a good bite. They typically choose two teeth for their weapons because it's simple to make and easy to balance. Vertical weapons, on the other hand, are usually smaller in diameter and spin at higher RPM so they often opt for a single tooth approach in order to achieve an effective amount of bite. For tonight's thing of the week, we have... Word bot of the week. That's a new one. They're always new. <laughs> You're right, they are. So David Braun is one of the writers that writes Farouk intros and some of the other aspects of the show. So he's entirely behind the scenes and we've gotten a lot of questions about Farouk intros. So let's hear it straight from David. Hello, uh, I'm David Braun. I am one of many word bots, as we call ourselves, uh, writers on BattleBots. Um, I am, first and foremost, we, uh, I want to say that the, the writing is really just a very small part of this is really it all comes down to um to farouk and and you know we're sort of the alley he's the oop um and so we really try hard to stay in the background and um you know he he adds flourishes he has he has suggestions he's probably the best in the business the best i've ever worked with in 20 some years um i've done thousands of hours of programming i've worked on probably you know, a couple hundred different shows is by far my favorite. Um, and one I take the most pride in and the one that I, uh, despite it being silly, the one that I, um, you know, have, have taken the most care with uh, because we love it. You know, it, it's a huge responsibility, actually. Uh, we see what people say sometimes, and we hear we hear you. Sometimes it gets a little silly. We've had several different word bots come through. Um, we reject things all the time. Uh, uh, so I'm sure that Reddit would uh, love some of the things that we, that we fail on. Um, let's see. Uh, our ideas. Our ideas come from anywhere, and they... Uh, and they come to you anywhere uh, I've been in the shower um, in the car uh, driving I'll sometimes shoot videos of myself um, sending in clips uh, the number one goal that all of us take is that we treat this world as a celebration uh, we want to honor um, everything that Greg and Trey and um, John and Peter uh, help bring to life and every builder, every friend and family member and sponsor uh, 
it's just it's really it's a true honor to just be invited into the world <laughs> one of my favorites uh, of all time is um, an introduction for Cobalt in season two of the reboot where uh, it was roses are red, this bot is blue, poems are dumb, now you're gonna die. And that one sort of allowed us to break, uh, break out and do sort of uh, things that were a little less like if it were a blank, then it's a blank. Um, it just sort of opened up the field a little bit. Uh, and so, you know, I'm particularly proud of that. And, you know, I'm just in awe of what the other writers bring because, you know, I have my own style. They have their own style. Um, and uh, the beauty of it is, is that you hand it off to Farouk and he makes it his own every time. Um, you know, he's amazing. And, you know, the inspiration really comes from Mark and, you know, in the original. And, you know, it's, there's no one that could ever replace that. So a lot of what our approach is to tip our hat to him. All right, that's the end of our show. But before we go, we have a giveaway. Kyle, the honors. Thank, thank you. Didn't know this was a conspiracy. Our winners this week, two winners of merch. We have both from YouTube, Josh Lounsbury and the immortal, the infamous Dino Nuggets. Congratulations, Dino Nuggets and Josh. Uh, DM us and we'll get you whatever free thing from the Tactical T-Rex store. If you didn't win the giveaway and you're feeling a little down on yourself, here's a montage of dead robots to help you feel better. Michael's bracket is broken <laughs> because he thought good robots were bad and bad robots were good. We're gonna talk to Tyler Wynn from Perfect Phoenix and we're gonna talk to Jack Barker from Endgame. And we're also- Ooh, We're gonna talk to Nick Maybe, not Jack Barker. Oh, maybe Nick? Hey, I just met you and this is crazy. I beat your robot, my name's Nick Maybe. Then we're gonna throw it to Technical T-Rex, right? Technical Dentist. Yeah. Do you want to have Will answer it and then we'll cut him off? <laughs> <laughs> For our first deep dive, we're going to talk to Tyler Wynn from Perfect Phoenix after his match against Endgame. Tyler wins some, Tyler loses some. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler wins some, Tyler loses some. Technical T-Rex, T-N-T-Rex stands for technical.